Hello students. Uh, in this talk, I will be explaining how I learn about structures and how I came to understand about structural aesthetic. Now, many architecture students find great difficulty with structures, um, mainly because of two things. Number one, they don't like the mathematic aspect of uh, learning structures. And number two, they think uh, structures is only related to uh, mathematics. Now, the main reason why this happened, that students do not like structures, is because they don't know enough about it in terms of uh, looking at buildings, reading books about structures. And obviously, uh, students don't like to read, and uh, they prefer to read something about architecture form but they don't like to read anything about structures because it is related to engineering. Uh, in this talk, I will show a different side of this whole matter and perhaps they will look at it in a different way. Now, just to uh, put up the idea that uh, understanding structures for architecture student is involved with actually understanding just basic structural principles. Now, principles means uh, how does a beam work, how does an arch work, or how does a tension member work. This is a uh, principles. They're not really mathematically, uh, uh, doesn't have a lot of mathematics in it. Uh, it's simply actually common sense. Now, structural system, um, all architects need to know structural system because structural system are something like, are you using a timber beam system or are you using a steel uh, truss system or are you using a concrete portal frame system or are you using a shell concrete system these are systems meaning the types of structural uh, system that uh, exists in the world now in the olden days you only have uh, a, a system based on stone and arch or a system based on timber and beam there's not that many choice but now they are a lot of choices. Uh, students also need to have an appreciation of structural materials. Now, this may come to be a slightly bit difficult because it involves with understanding about the strength of materials. Uh, some mathematics is required, but uh, it's not that much. But you need to read about it, and then you will be able to uh, appreciate it. Uh, the other thing that is a bit close to mathematics is what is called the depth to span ratio. Now, for architects, we need to understand the depth or the thickness of uh, the structural member. If you're going to draw a section and uh, you want to put a truss that spans a certain uh, distance, you need to know roughly uh, the depth, we call it, which is about the thickness of the truss. Um, and, and learning about depth to span is, is it's a lot of fun and it's not that much of a mathematic challenge. Uh, horizontal integrity means that the structure must be stable and uh, you only need to know what are the elements that makes it stable, for instance, bracing or shear wall and that sort of things. Nothing mathematical about it, just some sense. Uh, types of loads are also a fun thing to know because uh, not all uh, buildings can withstand uh, any kind of load. There are only specific type of loads uh, that uh, you can put the building uh, to carry. Uh, for instance, if you are looking at uh, the wind load or you're looking at the uh, gravity load or the live load or the uh, dead load of a, of a certain uh, system, that is something that needs to be, to be looked at. Now, there is also uh, the necessity to understand what is called the maximum spans. Um, maximum spans mean what kind, what is the maximum that a certain structural system can, uh, can you be used for. For instance, a suspension uh, steel cable can go up to 3 kilometers from one column to another column. But an economic span is the span that you use uh, mostly in any of the uh, uh, buildings uh, that does not require much long spans. 
and that is something that you may be able to uh, uh, look at in a different uh, manner. Now, in my third year of architecture school, I had to take uh, structures, and uh, it was taught in a in a basically mathematic manner with uh, all these uh, bending moments and shear diagrams and uh, forces of compressions and tensions. Um, so when I went to the bookshop uh, of the Faculty of Architecture, I discovered this book. It was first published in 1980 when I actually arrived in the United States. So I discovered it about two years later. And it's called Why Buildings Stand Up. Um, it is written by uh, Mario Salvadori. Later on, I found that Mario Salvadori uh, is a structural engineer and a professor of uh, architecture at a university in the United States. Uh, he specializes uh, in educating architects about structures. So this book is actually a very interesting book because it is written for the layman, meaning ordinary people. So it has a lot of history of structures and very interesting facts and figures relating to structures that makes it uh, alive. And I highly recommend this book because it is very, very um, exciting. Um, it also has an uh, explanation of basic structural principles and introduced structural systems. Everything that I had mentioned in the previous slides, uh, all the words are basically there in this uh, book but it is written in a in a in a story like or a history like manner not uh, like an engineering manner so if you are to really uh, learn about structure you must read this book why buildings stand up by mario salvadori now mario salvadori then wrote another book it's called structure in architecture the building of buildings um, he wrote it with Robert A. Heller. And um, this book is specifically written for architects. It has no mathematics in it at all. It has a lot of uh, uh, explanation on principles of uh, um, structures that only architects would read, not the lay person. And uh, I found it very fascinating. To the point that uh, later on, when I was a lecturer at UTM, I translated the book into uh, Bahasa Malaysia. Um, so this book is also highly recommended. If you can read these two books, then your sense of structure and your understanding of structure is there. Now, many architects don't really like to learn this thing, but uh, you need to speak with engineers. And if you do not know the terms, the engineers would not really respect you very much because the architect is supposed to, to lead the uh, the uh, design team or the building team and uh, you really need to read architecture just listening to your lecturers talks about all the mathematic aspect is totally inadequate or not enough you must read uh, this book After that, I discovered that uh, I really love uh, to look at structures and begin to understand them. And I went to the library and I found uh, this book called Structure and Form in Modern Architecture. It's a very big book. It's called a folio book. It's a big book. Um, it's like a coffee table book, but then in, inside, it, there's not that much writing. But there are a lot of drawings which explain structure in a very illustrative manner. So a single drawing, you can understand the structure already. And uh, in this book, Kurt Siegel is trying to explain the beauty of form uh, that is created from structure through its logic or its rationale. Rather than um, structure being treated as something just to support uh, the building. Now, traditional architects only use structure just to support the gravity loads uh, so that they can do carvings and they can do ornaments and those are the real things that is considered architecture. But in modern architecture, the form of structure becomes the, the element that is exploited uh, and 
and uh, this is what the the book is about how form function and structure are married together and we will talk about this in what is called structural aesthetic another book i found is about uh, probably the greatest engineer that ever lived in the 20th century his name was pierre luigi nervi he's an italian and uh, he lived and worked and built uh, in the middle of the 20th century um and when i uh, look at his building is completely mind blowing because he's just not trying to express structure for its beauty he was actually trying to solve the problem of structure uh, by having the least material the least method of construction or the easiest method of construction and the product is not just economic it's easy to build and most importantly it became very beautiful so beauty is a product of all these things and and that is really very hard to come by unless you truly understand uh what structure is and nervi is the best of the best so i highly recommend if you don't even read the book just go through and look at all the buildings that he has built uh, i mean that is shown in the book uh, similarly with kurt sigel even if you don't read it uh, just look at the drawings in the book that should be enough but reading should be uh, books by such persons as uh, mario salvadori now when i begin to form a love of structure i not only look at buildings i love to look at uh, uh, bridges especially i am in awe of bridges and dams when i look at dams and i look at bridges i always wonder how they are constructed not just the fact that how they are built or their structure so i began to find books about it and i learn a lot about bridges how to build them um tunnels dams and and towers so uh it is not necessary really to uh, an architect to understand how to build because that is the realm of the engineer but it is also useful for architects to know uh, actually how the method of construction because sometimes in a very sensitive area like in conservation area you need to know how how a thing is constructed not just uh its construction itself or its uh, structure itself but how to make it because that will have an impact on the on the surrounding area so um if you don't read the book at least get something of this and and browse through and look at the 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 various uh, different structures that most architects will never end up designing like dams architects don't build dams and bridges same thing but it means that you you have a wider understanding of of structure and and, and in my perspective as an architect you need to know the uh, uh the development of bridges because uh if bridges can span very large distances distances then that means you can build a roof and this is very important so when i ever i ask students what is the biggest or the furthest roof you can build without a column in between no one can answer they would always quote a building or that building but they never quote uh, the strength of building bridges now the last book that i want to show is by wolfgang schweiler horizontal span building structures this is a very thick book i discovered it now uh, it is totally an engineering book it is written for the engineer so what am i doing with that book well i didn't read the book of course because it's full of calculations and uh, numbers and 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 things like that but it has also wonderful drawings which i will show so the importance of this book is that it has many many pages i think more than 30 pages of drawings like this and this are the very best drawings of structures because the uh, illustrator 
have taken out all the uh, the glass wall and and the other uh, enclosures and left the structure uh, in his drawing and so if you look at uh, just one drawing you can see the skeleton of the building you can more or less understand this now as i said there are many pages i think 30 pages of these kinds of thing imagine if one page have 20 buildings you would have something like 600 buildings uh, but i do remember i memorized about 300 buildings and that is why i'm able to teach structures and even be a consultant in structure because i can sense the structure since i have seen many of the buildings that uses this uh, structure so i can understand the maximum span or the economic span as well as the ability or the inability of the structure just by looking at the drawings and i will show you um, and we can see here uh, for instance the dulles international airport very clear how the cables are being suspended burgo paper mill by nervi and also um, this uh, cable beams i have built a model of this in one of my uh, structure classes and um, this help also in the understanding now there are also other uh, drawings like this which is about portal frames or uh, what we call frame structures and again uh, when you strip the structure of all the walls you will see the uh, skeleton and this kind of skeletal drawings are very important for us to look at if we look at them long enough um, many buildings uh, to our uh, knowledge or to our understanding uh, then we become in a sense an expert at structures and so uh, one of the final drawings i will show here is um, what is called portal trusses and um, well you, you wouldn't imagine this if you did not look at it uh, imagination and creativity in structure requires you to look at a lot of buildings um, then only you can be creative because if you look at many of the buildings long enough and as i said uh, with many buildings uh, in your what we call it uh, um, in your a storage of memory uh, then you will begin to have what is termed a sense of structure again we have uh, one more uh, slide that shows uh, uh, the different cable state structures this is what i said when uh, you look at bridges and if the bridge can do that then you can uh, also build a roof system and i have actually used some of the uh, uh, structural system that i learned from looking at these pic pic uh, pictures in my studio work and i got an a for it because the uh, the lecturers were very impressed that uh, a student can understand such a complex system uh, of uh, structure actually wasn't that difficult but then um, as i said uh, reading and uh, long hours looking at books uh, paid off in terms of understanding and when i became a lecturer i'm one of the very few lecturers in architecture who's been trained in architecture who is willing or love to teach structures many lecturers if you find a hundred lecturers 99 of them will never want to teach structures okay and there's only one that might want to teach structures now we come to a slightly different topic which is called structural aesthetic now it is one thing for an architect to understand structure so that he can he or she can use it in the building but it is another thing to impress clients with a a sense of structural aesthetic um, structural aesthetic is not to just beautify structure that that's wrong structural aesthetic is like what nervi has done 
and uh, it is about the marriage between form, function, and uh, courageous expression. I call it, and uh, this is the definition that I put: marriage between structure, construction, economics, and daring expression. Uh, only people like Nervi can actually do that. And, and and if you were a person who understands structure, you could actually use uh, this thing called structural aesthetic uh, to impress your clients uh, with your work. And if you are a student, then you can impress your lecturers. Um, this structural aesthetic actually comes from the philosophy of form following function. Um, form in the modernist principle is not about tradition. Uh, modernism or modernist architect hate tradition. They don't like tradition because to them it is irrational. You follow the form of a house because in the past the house looks like like that. Okay, keep roof and all that. But uh, Corbusier says no. Uh, you can build flat roof. So now we build flat roof and we can create a garden on the flat roof. In the olden days, you cannot have a garden on the flat roof. Uh, on the roof. So its form follows function philosophy. Um, it is also part of the minimalist ideology, which has a relation with the socialist a political construct, where um, you use material only in a minimum sense. Um, in capitalism, you, you want to buy a lot of things so that uh, the economy grows. But in minimalist or socialist value, um, you just use enough. You don't use more than that. And uh, in the zeit in the zeitgeist or the Zen uh, Buddhist uh, moralistic tradition, uh, the idea of less is more. Meaning, the less you have, actually, the more you uh, what we call uh, be grateful for or uh, have an understanding of a better awakening or awareness. Um, in life, we fill ourselves with a lot of things which actually 90% of them we do not need. And so to really be great, uh, you must have less and discover that it is more. In structure, the less you put the structure, the more the beauty and the function and the rational will come out. Now, all this structural aesthetic can actually be understood from a simple uh, organic uh, thing called the tree. You've looked at trees before, you've passed trees before, but you actually never understood that the tree is the best expression of structural aesthetic. Why? Because every single part of the tree, whether you're looking at the trunk, whether you're looking at the branch, whether you're looking at the leaf, whether you're looking at the stalk, whether you're looking at the flowers even, they are all structural expression. Why? Simply. Because they have to fight gravity, number one. And the other thing is they have to fight the wind. And so when the wind push them and the gravity pull them down, the, uh, the, the trunk, the, the, the branches develop in a certain form. And the leaves have to uh, expose its surface area as much as possible in order to take the sun or to get the energy of the sun for them to produce food called photosynthesis. And so every single aspect of the tree, from its roots to its trunk, through its branches, through its leaves, they are all structured. And it is completely expressed and not covered up. That is the essence of structural aesthetic. One of my favorite buildings, uh, which is actually not built, uh, it's a project by Miss van der Rohe. It's called the Mannheim Theater. Now, if you look at the Mannheim Theater, to me, it's probably one of the most beautiful buildings. And it's so simple, so minimalist. All uh, Miss van der Rohe did was that he created a cube of space without any columns inside by hanging the ceiling from exposed trusses. Now, most engineers or most architects would put the roof on top of the trusses, but not miss. Miss hung the ceiling from the truss. Now, there's a logical rationale to it. If you put the ceiling on the truss, then you have to put what we call a drop ceiling. Then you have about one third of the volume of air 
being wasted in terms of uh, air conditioning. Here, um, MIS has created a completely uh, minimum amount of air that needs to be air conditioned or conditioned. And uh, uh, this is the beauty of the system. And then if you look, you could actually understand and read the building in terms of what are the, the main columns. And you can see the columns. And what are the main spanning member? You can see the spanning member. And then what are the secondary structural system? You can see the secondary structural system in the windy emollients and also the uh, floor decking and uh, ceiling uh, uh, rafters uh, from steel. And you could also read where the core of the building is in terms of its uh, shaft and uh, its, its uh, staircase and toilets and stuff like that. It's clear. You could you could see it, and and that is the beauty of what is called minimalist architecture. Less is more, structural, aesthetic. Then you have a very complex system, uh, Kenzo Tange. Now this building is extremely beautiful because uh, when Tange used the uh, suspended cable uh, system of the bridge, and put it into the stadium, the end result of the form actually looks like a like a Japanese traditional roof. But of course, the Japanese traditional roof is not a tensile member. It is a, uh, a compressive uh, system of timber. This is concrete cables and um, the use of um, the ceiling as the metal plates. Um, everything is done in a manner in which uh, the, uh, the, the curved beams are hung from the main cables and also to the walls, which are also curved. And uh, the curved wall is in fact curved because it is supposed to be a horizontal arch. So you have an arch action, which is on the horizontal. Arch action is usually on the vertical. Um, but this is uh, a different way of looking at it and the result of it is an incredible beautiful and eternally long-lasting uh, structure uh, of uh, the creation of Kenzo Tange. Now the other building that employs a, a tensile system is the Yale Hockey Ring by Eero Sarinen. Now, Sarinen used three arches. One is an upright arch, which looks like a, the back of a dinosaur or like a, like a uh, vertebrate column, uh, like your uh, back column. And it is curved in the normal arched way. Then there are two other arches which form the walls and also the stadium seats, like the uh, Kenzo Tange Stadium. And so between this hung the cables uh, that would pull the stress from the upright arch to the arch that is on the ground or the one that is laying on the ground in a horizontal manner. And the whole system is a complete system. And so you see, you have a, a the marriage between structure, uh, form. I'm not not sure about economics. Uh, sometimes these kinds of system are very expensive. It's not necessarily economical, but the expression that uh, is is taken or uh, become the result is something that clients are willing to pay for, uh, like the uh, uh, Kenzo Tange Stadium. There are many other systems that can span the. Uh, uh, the, the swimming pool that is uh, uh, covered by the stadium and they are relatively cheaper but uh, this marriage between form and structure and aesthetic is something that uh, sometimes people will pay for to get it. Now coming to the end of the talk um, you can learn more and uh, build up your understanding of structure by watching three discovery channels, which I often do. Uh, one of them, my favorite, is extreme engineering. Again, as I said, uh, 
it's not necessary for architects to know how things are built but i find it exciting i find it useful and i find it sometimes uh, i can use it into the design if you can understand not only the structural principle involved and the structural system used but also how uh, materials are to be put on site and how uh, they have to dig up the foundation and, and, and put up the building step by step. Another uh, channel is the mega structures. It's also mind boggling, always considering big, big buildings. And of course, we have the other ones called big, bigger and bigger. Uh, not just about buildings, but also structures and sometimes about machinery. And uh, I find all three channels uh, very exciting, very entertaining, and very informative. And it's a nice way to learn. Finally, uh, in summary, uh, I would like to say that uh, I've learned structures by reading. And I think you must at least read one book and I would definitely recommend the book by Mario Salvadori or by Kurt Siegel, but Salvadori is the best as far as I know at the moment. And then you must look at many structural concept drawings, 100 or 200, and if you can find the book Horizontal Span Building, then uh, that is the wealth or the treasure trove of structure. Uh, nothing compares to that book. Of course, I have also look at other books in the library of uh, University of Wisconsin. I went through many books that shows what is called structural models, where the engineer built models. And I learned a lot from these models. And looking at all the models, it's inspired me uh, to have different forms of building. And you should also watch how structures are assembled, uh, how things are put together. And uh, you should also have some interest in other engineering structures, not just buildings, but other things like tunnels. How do, how do, they, how do they create tunnels? Because sometimes uh, in the near future, architects might have to build underground, uh, perhaps because of nuclear war, we will have to live underground uh, or super volcanic eruption, which will cause the world uh, to be in a in a in a cloud of uh, dust which can kill you, so you have to go underground or under the sea, and this requires different forms of structures. Then we have space travel; where you have to go to Mars, where you have to moon, you have to build there. And so, how how do you how do you send the material there? How do you design a module of a, or say a space hotel? And 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 these are uh, things which architects need to think about, and they cannot just think about it in terms of just beauty and structural system. They need to know how uh, to get the build materials there and to put them together. So uh, uh, I assume architecture will approach more uh, towards the engineering side and the engineering side will approach also more towards the architecture side. Finally, I want to end by the words of Pierre Louis Guinervi. Uh, more or less, this is what he meant. I, I don't really know the exact quote. But he said that he will never trust the mathematics of structures unless his eyes and his feeling about the structure sense uh, tells him that the structure is right. Meaning if it looks right to him, it's right. You can convince uh, uh, Navi by using all the mathematics and all the engineering uh, knowledge you have, uh, but he will always trust his eyes uh, in order to see whether the structure is safe or not safe. So I hope you uh, enjoy this talk and it gives you a different perspective of structure and uh, it opens up to you a new uh, area of interest that will definitely help your design and impress your lecturers as well as uh, your clients in the future.